hey y'all what's up so i'm gonna talk to y'all again more about religion and narcissism right because it's crazy so i literally um i had oh my neighbor um i finally got a chance to meet her because usually i'm so busy and then she's busy with her and all her kids and everything so i finally we finally actually met in person last night which was really awesome so, you know, I'm spiritual and she's very uh, devout, you know, Christian, very religious. I don't care because at the end of the day, you understand what narcissism is. And you also understand that, you know, spiritual warfare is a thing, right? And that we battle not against flesh and blood, but higher principalities, right? So we got to talking and um, what's crazy is like meeting her in person, like, God has a way of telling you things when you need to know them, you know? Certain questions I've always had wondered about or I've had theories go in my mind. So I got to thinking, and it was crazy because she was telling me this story about uh, her mom and how she's like demon possessed and everything and how her eyes turn black. I said, holy shit, I've experienced that. Like, go check out my video about the black eye theory um and and i promise you there's just confirmations left and right because i also had the same conversation with another friend about you know he was kind of telling me like well you know the happier i am i notice the lighter my eyes get i said well i have a video about that like called the dark eye theory like what if the lighter your heart is and the happier you are the lighter your eyes are but the darker the soul or the more evil and vile the person is, the darker the eyes. I mean, it's a real theory. You know what I'm saying? Like they say, the eyes are the windows to the soul, right? So imagine somebody's soul because they are demon possessed. Their, their eyes are dark as shit. Because that's the only thing I can think of. Like for somebody's eyes to turn completely black i'm not talking about the white parts i'm talking about like the whole iris like see how small my pupil is there's no way that your pupil is gonna dilate so freaking big that it's just gonna cover your iris it's impossible because there are two different muscles within your eye yeah you know i used to once upon a time want to be a doctor so i am very hip to the human body you know what i'm saying i know a lot about the human body the human body is very interesting to me um but i remember trying to like talk to like pastors and stuff about it and they're just like trying to basically gaslight me like oh you're just crazy you're tripping you're just seeing things no you probably the same fucking spirit because when you think about it a lot of people i spoke with a uh with someone about you know um their narcissist the other day and i'm happy that people are beginning to notice not this it's not the vessels it's just the manifestation of the spirit of this entity this evil demonic energy whatever you want to call it right but for me i speak on my mom so much because she's the face of them when i look at her you know even though it's her i don't know if it's one or multiple demons i'm gonna say it's probably multiple but it's crazy because i've always had this theory in the back of my mind and i'm like man the church is not well to me hasn't been helpful um a lot of you know wolves and sheep's clothing a lot of you know uh they like to preach and talk the Bible, but behind closed doors, they're hypocrites and they don't follow the word worth, you know what I'm saying? Come on now. So if you, cause again, at the end of the day, me and her got to talking and oh my God, next thing I know, it's like fucking one in the morning. I was like, I gotta fucking go to work. I gotta go to sleep, but we're gonna have to cut this conversation short cause shoot, we would've been talking till the sun came up, baby. Like, this is an interesting, a very interesting conversation. And I mind you, this we've been talking since like eight something at night for till one in the morning. And then till I met her all her kids. Her kids are so sweet, like each one of them. But um, 
it was very interesting because you know she kind of we were kind of talking exchanging experiences and everything like that and i was like wow so you know just in talking to her she was just kind of giving advice because you know on my end as the uh survivor of a narcissist you know what i'm saying um it's not just my pain and suffering, but the actual pain and suffering of the individual that is possessed with, you know, a lot of people like to call it the Jezebel spirit, right? Now, it was funny because I was like, that makes no fucking sense because like back in back in the day, like my great grandma and grandma and them, they would call whores Jezebels. So it confused me because now I'm thinking about a whore, a prostitute, you know what I'm saying? Instead of focusing on the spiritual aspect that it is an entity called that they named Jezebel because of Jezebel in the Bible. If you know the story. If you don't, one of these days I might sit here and tell it because a lot of people have never truly read the damn Bible. Never have. They just listen to the pastor preach the same old John 3.16 and you know certain other scriptures you know what i'm saying they've never actually read so you know that they didn't study it but you are supposed to pray without ceasing basically and it's crazy because she basically was telling me um her experiences and things like that and it got me to thinking on my own experiences and things of that nature and um it's crazy because you know again i was never atheist or anything like that being spiritual i just took away the religious box because i feel like society tries to rep weaponize religion well if you don't do this you're gonna go to hell to me the bible says fear not right god said fear not so why are you trying to instill fear in me that oh because I made a mistake, I'm just gonna go to hell. Baby, I feel we already here. Look at the state of people. Everybody's state of quote unquote hell is a different it's a different level for every devil. Not everybody is um in hell, you know. The people who are focused on the world and everything that's going on in the world. Oh my god, gas prices are going up, shiver me timbers, oh my god, like you know what I'm saying? Come on now. Like when you keep your eyes on your your if you're spiritual your spirituality if you keep your eyes on god if you keep your eye you know what i'm saying whatever you know people who say believe in jesus however you know you keep your eyes on that and you focus on that and you strive on that every day you're not worried about the stuff that goes on in the world and to me that's where i'm at when people are like oh my god it's so hard to get houses because this that and the third look at the end of the day i wouldn't give a damn if the market crashed god would still bless me with a damn house okay like every i believe everything works out for my good even the bad things even the so-called bad things work out for my good okay you know um I'm gonna give you an example. Like, let's say I caught a flat tire going to work or something like that. So now I gotta call my insurance, this, that, and the third. Come to find out, if I would've continued driving another 15 minutes, I would've ended up in a terrible accident and probably died. You know what I'm saying? So when we have delays in our life, I know that it's, it's inconvenient, but to me, that's a moment when God is like trying to slow you down. Like, hey, I'm looking out for you. You're not like listening. You're not seeing the signs. So you know what? I'm going to bust your tire or some shit, you know, or make something happen where, hey, like, like, for example, I had to run around with my chicken with my head cut off this morning because I didn't go get gas last night. So I had to go get gas this morning, do this, do that, you know, when I should have just did it last night. But... You know, so I mean, although I'm not going to be late anyway, but whatever. Um, It's just amazing though. Like, I love that people um, are starting to see like narcissism for what it is. A lot of people 
want to be like, man, why is narcissism so, um, it, it's, it's just becoming very, very noticed, right? And it's just like, it's always been there, you know? It's always been there going back to even Jezebel herself and the Bible and all of that, you know what I'm saying? And she died a horrific death as well. So, I mean, it's just crazy. Um, but it was interesting how she was trying to give me, my neighbor was trying to give me an insight to tell me that even though I've suffered, you know, my mom, for example, is suffering even more because now I don't know what she has done. You know, she had to have been doing something bad, like progressively, you know what I'm saying? So let's say, you know, she started out stealing gum from a store. Then it turned into stealing clothes from people. Now it's like you're lying. Now you're this. And now you're that. And now these, you know, entities got a grip on you. Or they've injured you and you didn't realize it. And now you're just doing so much evil shit that you can't stop. And even if you really wanted to repent and turn back, they're not going to let you. They're holding you bound like a stronghold and all this and stuff like that. But I was like, at the end of the day, you know, I was like, well, I got to worry about me and how would I, you know, it's crazy because she wasn't the only one to really say it. I've had a couple other people in my life say it like, hey, you know, God has made you and your mom part ways and be separate for now because you got to build your strength you you have to heal and you got to build your strength so that when you come back to face that demon in her if it's just one you know um you can cast it out because uh i used to have like a lot of exorcism dreams from a child all the way shit i still have them now really the last one i had was actually february 2020 prior to you know covid and um oh my gosh one thing about those entities and i believe now that i think about it after having this conversation she gave me a revelation about my dream my last dream that i had and she was like yeah you know generally it's not just one it's like multiple a legion or whatever and i was just like huh Cause you know you could never tell that if it's one because it's like even if one left how many more would you be able to tell that's there you know but um yeah like spiritual warfare it is real and to me narcissism is not really linked i mean to religion say if you want to say it's religion or spiritual or whatever but you know if you basically, it's definitely a war between God's people and Satan's people. You know what I'm saying? And all I know is, you know, I've I've known. Hmm, how old was I? I was probably between the age of 12 and 14. And my mom, when she would do shit that she would do, I'd be like, "Oh, you devil, you devil, you demon," you know, and. I feel like thinking back on those moments when I would call my mom a devil or a demon, it was my, it was the spirit of God in me talking to the demons in her because they, they, hey, opposing forces know each other. Just because our conscious mind doesn't understand or comprehend what is going on, our spirit picks up on things a lot faster, our intuition, and that's why you should trust it if you don't, you know? But I found it interesting because it was like, man, so we talked about like the theory behind like dark eyes and we talked about like different like supernatural experiences and things like that because the average person, you know, that say I would try to talk to about it, they wouldn't understand. I've dealt with spirits my entire life, you know, even my cousin that I had to kick out my house he had a spirit he had to have had a spirit because there's no reason why you're trying to cause strife chaos drama you know there's no reason why you're 
attempting to do all this you know what I'm saying and um it just gave me more of an insight as to what they're dealing with because because hey as far as me casting demons out oh yeah I'll cast you and the motherfucking person on out my life <laughs> skedaddle bye I'm back to a peaceful life <laughs> you know what I'm saying but you know I had to remember that you know because like when I see their faces I'm looking at the face I'm not thinking about the entity that's there and even though I can know that it's there I'm just like man it's too much work to worry about trying to cast it out so hey I just need y'all to go on about y'all fucking business you know if you got your grips on them you got your grips on them, you know because in my mind I'm like I'm not an exorcist you know like in the exorcist movies and stuff and the only thing my mama ain't done is projectile vomit and contort her body and twist her neck around 360 and crazy shit but um other than that as far as the manifestations of it being there the behavior the controlling behavior the bullying trying to instill fear um and then another note that like my neighbor made was another way that people most people end up demonically possessed is they hook into people who harbor bitterness hatred resentment those are low vibrational emotions so what's gonna happen a low vibrational entity is gonna attach or enter you you know i remember the time where i harbored a lot of resentment and hatred and bitterness towards my mom i knew it and my and i i was on the fence i was on the fence to being a possible narcissist being an ain't shit bitch just out here about to screw over hey if you can't beat them join them type attitude like shit fucking air man for they self type shit but my soul like you know god in me was like nah nah that's not what i got for you you know what i'm saying and it was like just you know this this you know it was just this other power that just gave me the strength to just not change me just because of how the world is stay me regardless i am the light and the world is darkness stay a damn light you know help other people find their spark because everybody has a spark god gave it to them but we have a choice and a lot of people have made a choice you know this is why i don't smoke or drink because i feel um i know alcohol definitely has a spiritual connotation to it you know when i was in college i went to a bar with some friends because they wanted to go out or whatever i'm just like okay whatever i don't really drink but it was like outdoor bar and i remember it was nighttime and i seen dark shadowy figures on top of these on top of the bar and they were searching for the drunkest person that they could or the drunkest people they could find so that they could enter them so i do believe that when you get drunk and when you get when you're not sober that hey your aura field is is you know it's low you know what i'm saying it's brought down because why do you think that um at least here in america they allow certain things to be legal. The things that they allow, alcohol, cigarettes, you know, why do you think they allow this stuff to be legal? They let it be legal because they know that spiritually, this shit is gonna bring you down. That each of those things, these so-called addictions, have spiritual connotations to them, you know? It's not that your body is addicted to cigarettes. It's not that your body is addicted to alcohol. You now have allowed that particular spirit associated with that, you know, nicotine or that alcohol to enter your vessel. And because you don't know that you're, you've now been possessed by an entity, you know what I'm saying? And I can say that because... <clears throat> I don't know what the fuck I done did, but I know I found this book on Amazon, and it was like 
how to root out demons and things of that and something inside me just told me read this fucking book but when you read it read the whole thing out loud you know and it's crazy because it was a, it was like a spiritual battle it really was because as i was reading it i had a lot of energy and as soon as i started reading this book all of a sudden i started feeling sleepy but there it was like a war inside of me because there was a spirit that was, that was not of god trying to you know root itself in me and that's why I like you know the, my spirit or god's spirit whichever you know, it was just like, we got to fight this. No, you know. So, I, and this was like 2020. But I read the book. I got sleepy. I stood up. I'm like, there's no reason why I'm feeling tired right now. All of a sudden. And I mean, I'm talking about groggy tired. Like, my eyelids is heavy all of a sudden. And I was like, I'm going to finish this book. So, I read. And it was like, I don't know, maybe a 20 page book. I think. Maybe less. But I read each prayer in that book and I felt the spirit leave me. And I was just like, and I felt a feeling of like a relief afterwards. And I'm just like, okay. Cause again, like I said, if a lot of people in the church are demonically possessed, if a lot of people in the church are sick, are, you know, broke, poor, all these things, right? You know, because at the end of the day, it's not about the building. It's not about the place. It's not about the people. It's about your heart, man. Do you have a pure heart? Yes or no? Because when you have a pure heart, you're straight. When you are able to renew your own mind and reprogram yourself, you, you know, a clean spirit is created in you. Like, but it was just interesting that when, um, my neighbor was saying some things she got me thinking back on every like experience regarding you know spirits and shit like that now this is the funny thing right so in 2020 or whatever after that entity spirit whatever it was that I felt leave my body it's crazy because shortly after mind you at the time I was staying on the third floor of my apartment that repeatedly for at least like three fucking months I kept just hearing this fucking knocking or this goddamn tapping on my fucking window just it sounded like well I don't know if y'all can hear um but it was just like a tapping like take your finger and tap on some glass or tap on a table it was just like this this incessant constant like like, like a fucking spirit was knocking at my fucking window. You know what I'm saying? Like, like clockwork every day, 3 a.m. for like three months. And I, and it'll be just when I manage to go to sleep or something like that. And I noticed that like, I believe that cats, they are spiritual protectors because at the time I only had Negan. So Negan, normally he'll sleep in the bed with me. But, you know, at certain times of the night, when I would hear this knocking, I noticed that either he was already there sitting at the windowsill or by the window. Like, he would sit between me and the window, you know? And I was just like, and this is just me thinking back on it. And he would sit between me and the window and I would hear that dog on knocking and he would just look at the window and he would just stare. I don't know what he was seeing, what spirit he was seeing or whatever, but you know, there was times that if he was next to me, he would get up, move and sit and just sit there, you know, and just look at the window. So I'm like, and you know, at the time I wasn't thinking nothing of it. You know, I was just like, you know, I felt like it was a spirit and I was just like, you know what, whatever spirit is trying to fuck with me, look, I'm tired, goddamn, leave me alone go away I rebuke you and I just turn over and go to sleep <laughs> you know what I'm saying after a while I stopped hearing it right and I, I remember I was talking to like a friend about it and my friend was like well maybe it's bugs hitting your window bugs are attracted to light 
if my room is dark because my TV is not on and there's no light, what reason would the bugs have to run into my window? What reason, and I know the noise or the difference between, oh, like the house settling, you know how when it's like the house or whatever is expanding, contracting, so it makes them creaking, creepy noises and stuff like that. It wasn't doing that. So it literally sounded like somebody was tapping on my fucking window. And at one point I went to the blinds and I'm like, and then I'm like, I'm on the fucking third floor. What the fuck? You know? Because remember, I was asleep, so I'm groggy as hell. And I'm like, who the fuck is knocking at my window? And when I'm, and then when I realized you're on the third floor, it was just like, ah, it must be a spirit or something. I don't know. That's just like my thoughts on what it was because it eventually stopped. It eventually went away. Because again, when you reject, when you say no, the the enemy has to go away. It has to go away. You know what I'm saying? But it was just interesting because she made me think back on all these like experiences and I'm just like, wow. Like, it was just very interesting. Like, and it just goes to show how spiritual warfare is so serious. So when I got like more like I guess into my spirituality and I got more serious about it to where it's become a daily thing for me, you know, and if God, you know, wakes me up at three in the morning. You know, I'll go ahead and like pray, you know what I'm saying? Because some days he'll wake me up at that time every day. Or there's something that he wants me to see, something he wants me to know. But generally around that time, I'll be damn tired. I do. But if I absolutely cannot go to sleep, then I get up or whatever. Or be like, what? What do you want? <laughs> Type deal. You know, I, you know, my relationship with God is just funny. Because there's been times, you know, like like Job, how Job, Job, he didn't really curse God, but he was pissed off because why the hell are you sending me through all of this? And, you know, I've been faithful and this, you know, I've had my points where I got fed up and I started cursing and I'm just pissed off. But those are my human emotions. He knows that, but he's like, yeah, you simmer down. Stop, stop that tantrum. Go. Yeah. Anyways, when you're done throwing your tantrum, I need you to do this okay <laughs> type deal it'd be funny but yeah the spiritual conversations of like these entities man like it'd be real it'd be real and the battle is real so i can only imagine the kind of hell people go through on a daily basis that are you know bound by the strongholds of these demons and things like that you know um Cause they probably want to do good things but they just can't i don't know but anyways you tell me your comments down below and tell me what you think be sure to give me a like and let me know let me know what you think all right be sure to share this i'll holla at y'all later bye